Okay guys, I'm really excited to shoot this video because I just feel like I just cracked the code on the Alocasia poly, also known as the African mask. And the reason I feel like I found the secret is because I've been killing these things left and right for the last few years. This is not my first one, not my first rodeo in the Alocasia poly. Some of you probably know this one's not the easiest to keep around. And I know the reason is because of a humidity thing. It's a watering thing. And right now, the beginning of February here in the Midwest, and so I'm not able to really get a whole lot of good sun as well as it's a, it's a uh, dry air issue. And I've been doing a lot to correct the humidity in my place. So that's, that's definitely something that is something I finally figured out. And that's when I want to run by you in this video. But before I keep going on, once again, look at that bell, like, and subscribe and you'll be updated on more future content like these tropicals that I'm talking about here. So the African mask, the alocasia, like many other alocasias or elephant ears, it likes a lot of humidity. It doesn't need the brightest light. It actually does the best in a medium or an indirect light situation, indoor and outdoor. Usually when I have these outdoors, I have them in a shady spot and they do extremely well, especially in the spring and even in the summer, as long as I keep it protected, because it's definitely known to burn up. You're going to you're going to see some burning on the tips if it gets too much direct sunlight. So in doors, it's a little bit trickier. You're going to give it a little bit brighter light. However, the winter time is when I always lose the alocasia here in the Midwest because the dry air, the heater, the um, inconsistent watering. And so what I'm noticing about this one, I actually found this at a grocery store, um, just like on a display. It didn't have a price on it. It was actually a really good find because there was no price tag. And since the store clerks don't really know what it was, I was like, hey, you know, I'll pay, I think five bucks or 10 bucks or something like that for it. You know, the manager was like, sure, yeah, five bucks, you know, take, we'll take your money. So I think I got this for five or 10 bucks. Comes with a cool, like a wicker basket pot. Uh, it's still in the plastic six inch pot. And that's what I want to get at is repotting. So, that's usually where I lose this one, especially if I repotted it anywhere around the winter time, because I'm very, I have a penchant for picking terracotta pots. That's just what I like and use the most. And with terracotta, they, they're porous, they're going to breathe, air is going to get in, which is a good thing. But generally speaking, some plants tend to dry out a little bit faster in the terracotta and that is kind of an Achilles heel for this plant here. The alocasias really like to stay evenly moist. And so I am realizing that this uh, little wicker basket, it's plastic line, it's, it doesn't let water out. And unbeknownst to me, I was watering regularly and it's doing great. However, water is just collecting <laughs> in this this base here um which any other plant it would be a, it would be a, a death spell but for this one it just it will just soak up that water through the bottom i'm sure the water levels dropped and it wasn't just sitting in water permanently and then that water also kind of percolates and forms like a humid cloud around the plant to give it additional humidity as well as i have this one grouped up around other plants so they're all kind of perspiring and sharing each other's humidity as like a communal thing and i think that's what's keeping this thing alive generally they'll usually though they're usually gone by this time of year and the fact that this one is so uh green full and lush means that 
Yeah, I, I'm glad I didn't repot, especially into a terracotta pot. I think maybe like a ceramic pot, because uh, there's maybe some of you are like me, you just don't like the pot that they come in, especially when it's these ugly uh, black pots, you know, and you want to get it into its new home right away. I'm definitely guilty of that. But I knew, f I knew that that would be a problem with this one. So since it came in such a cool decorative pot here i just left it how it is and and that's especially pertinent when you're bringing in plants during the winter if you if you're buying plants at in winter time you're going to want to just leave them alone and i know that can be real hard to do so this one is i believe here to stay i'm definitely going to use some of these same practices next year they do come from a bulb and they will kind of come back in the spring but there's been times where they were just so far gone that they just never came back in the spring so uh all i've been really doing outside of that you know once again the humidity grouping it up around other plants as well as just consistent watering you know i check the soil there's moss on here right now but i just make sure it does not dry out that's the the big problem with these if you let it dry out you'll start seeing yellowing and browning on the leaves uh, as well and that's a sign of that and in proper humidity the uh, soil just make sure it's a well balanced well draining soil you know uh, find something that's uh, of a high quality i always use that soil it's got a lot of uh, mycorrhiza and you know a lot of trace elements this one, uh, I haven't repotted, so I'm not sure what they use in it, but um, I'm pretty sure, you know, in the spring, I'll probably do a repot and I'll just uh, use a really high quality potting soil. And other than that, yeah, just medium light, really. Medium light, I feel like is key or bright indirect light, just not right in front of your window unless it's like a Maybe like a north facing window might be uh, adequate. Uh, and then you, once again, just trial and error and experiment with this one. And, uh, you know, that's that's what I want to also give to you is that just for the fact that I failed at having the alocasia before doesn't mean I should just give up. Because I, I have a lot of people, they say, oh, I have a black thumb. I'm bad with plants. Plants aren't for me. I like them, but I kill them. It doesn't have to be, you know, an end-all, be-all. Just, I mean, try and try again. I mean, I'm pretty sure Michael Jordan didn't make his first three-point shot. You know, it's, you just don't, anyway, this isn't a motivational speak. But I just wanted to uh, throw that out there because I hear a lot of people saying that that sort of thing and that it doesn't really have to be that way. I mean, I, I wasn't good at this either from the get go. So I just kept trying and just keep trying with that alocasia. Get a, give it some good light, give it some good humidity and um, maybe group it up around some of your other plants. And then once you can get it in a warm, uh, you know, tropical like environment, depending on where you live, it's going to thrive. And it's actually outside of that, a pretty easy one to take care of. So go out and grab one when you see it. Look for more of my future videos. And thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.